what if I slightly alter the embedding? Such a thing I don't think anyone else would have shown you. So I am going to change one embedding. I don't know which feature it is because this all learned using a neural network. Welcome to Techie Talks AI. I am Sri from Shogani. On this channel, we bring you hands-on demonstrations and insights into the latest tools and trends to help you get started with ease. Don't forget to subscribe and be a part of our journey into the future of technology. Hi, welcome to Learn LLM series videos. One more video on embedding and positional encoding. This is also a very unique video. I don't think you will find a similar video anywhere else where we are practically learning how embedding works and how positional encoding works. So here is the application that is going to show us certain aspects of embedding and what happens when we add positional encoding. If you do not know what embedding is and what is positional encoding is, please remember to watch the previous video. Okay, so now here, if I enter a text, I love parrots and click on tokenize, this gets converted into these tokens. Okay, so I has become one token and its ID is 40. Space and love, this uh, capital G indicates space, has become a token and its ID is 1842. And space and PAR of parrots is 1582. And then ROTS is the next token and its ID is 2474. Okay, so we are using BPE tokenizer of GPT-2. At this stage, these tokens have no meaning. They are just numbers, but fixed numbers. Now, when we add embedding to these tokens a long series of numbers called vectors or embedding gets added to these token and that gives these tokens meaning so semantic meaning it adds to these tokens okay then we add positional encoding like this i is first token love is second token par is the third token rots is the fourth token so these positional numbers will get added to our embedding in the form of a sinusoidal equation sine cos equation based numbers get added to this embedding so we are going to see its impact in this video we already know it's working we have extensively discussed this in previous two videos but in this video we are going to see a unique aspect of this let's keep just one word say cat okay so cat is 9246 is the token id and if you click here, what happens is a long sequence of numbers called embedding, which is a vector. In GPT-2's case, it is 768 long number is added to this token cat or to this token ID 9246. So these values will indicate some feature of this cat. So 768 numbers or dimensions will give the word cat a meaning. So what is the point? We saw in this multidimensional object of vocabulary where all the words or all the subwords of 50,257 subwords are placed in this multidimensional object cat has certain position in this object okay so this is the embedding for the word cat and these values all put together will give its meaning i'm not sliding it because then it it will lose its meaning okay these values are derived from gpt2 model itself so now what? 
what is new in this there is nothing new in this but now what i'm going to show is how can we get the bird cat back from this embedding is that possible you may have studied vector search or similarity search so we can do uh, an operation called similarity search to find closest words in the vocabulary to this embedding. Imagine that this is just two dimensional embedding x and y. So x and y and two dimensional. So if x has a value and y has a value, this is where cat appears with its meaning in this two dimensional space. Remember, this is a much bigger dimensional space, what you see below, which has got 768 items. Okay, so now if we want words similar to cat, say for instance, kitten is here, you need to see its distance, right? And that distance can be computed using dot product or cosine similarity. Cosine similarity also gives us the distance. So that is called similarity search. Why are we talking about this? That is what we are going to see here. I have provided a button on the left side. Similarity search using the embedding. So if we click here, what will it do is, it will take the embedding for the token cat and list out 20 closest tokens. So let's click and see. See here, we have closest token cats. We have a cat with C cats. Uh, here is the token ID. And in the right side, we have the distance. Space cat, space capital cat, space cats. All these words are similar. But you see this, there is a bat, there is a dog at some distance. Okay. Still it falls within the closest 20 tokens. Okay, there is a boat. We can see kittens, then catastrophe. So the top one is cats, closest is cats, and 20th item is catastrophe. Okay, clear? What if I slightly alter the embedding? Such a thing, I don't think anyone else would have shown you. So I'm going to change one embedding. I don't know which feature it is because this all learned using a neural network. So they're they not meaningful for humans. So I, I change this. I'm changing this value. Okay, one dimension of the vector. Now, if I click similarity, what can happen? Let's see. Still, the first item, closest item is cats. But see, the 20th item earlier was catastrophe. Now it is rabbit. See this? So that is what I wanted to show you. So you cannot manually play around with these embedding values because it won't make any sense because we don't know what they independently represent but all these vectors put together will give its meaning and higher the dimension more fine grain the meaning will be clear so let's reset it put back our cats embedding now what i'm going to show is the impact of adding positional encoding to this like in a multi token sequence say i love cats cat will appear as a third word right you, we need to indicate the large language model that in this sequence cat is the third word or in this case it is the first word so for that this is the equation using which we will add we have discussed this in previous two videos with very nice demonstrations so i'm not going into the calculation but remember by clicking this we will calculate sin cos sin cos values to these for each of these dimension and add them to this embedding. So it will slightly alter the embedding. Clear? It is important that we add positional encoding, but it is next to impossible that we add 
positional encoding to this embedding without slightly altering its meaning. So that is what we are going to see. So I am going to click here. You will see them, see these values changing. See, the values got slightly altered. So now, if you click on similarity search, you will see the difference. See, even now, first item is cats. And initial items look similar. But see, 20th item was earlier catastrophe without positional encoding, pure embedding. But now, by adding positional encoding, it altered, made some change in the nearest items. Like catastrophe is now the 18th item and girl appeared in the as the 20th item. See this? So, uh, in this video, I just want to tell you that Positional encoding is important for our learning mechanism to have the proper contextual vector created. But adding positional encoding slightly alters our position. So that similarity is slightly altered. So the trade-off is without positional encoding, the contextual sense cannot be obtained. And with positional encoding, semantic meaning slightly gets altered. Okay, that is what I wanted to highlight. Give your valuable comments. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.